guys, we're here with WTF Car Reviews and today we're going to be reviewing the all-new 2023 Toyota 4Runner TRD Sport. And a big thanks to Bill and the rest of the management and staff here at Toyota of Tampa Bay for making this review possible. I'll leave a link to their inventory below and if you're looking for a new car, SUV, or truck in the Tampa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for Bill. And for those of you guys who don't know, the 4Runner has been Toyota's mid-sized body-on-frame rear-wheel drive base SUV since 1984, replacing the Toyota Trekker platform. We're currently sitting on the fifth generation of the 4Runner, which has been around since 2010, originally facelifted in 2014, which featured a revised front and rear fascia, projector headlamps, and LED taillights. We also got soft door trim, leather steering wheel, and an updated dashboard and center stack for 2014. In 2020, the 4Runner got Toyota Safety Sense P, which includes high-speed radar cruise control, capable of doing radar cruise from 25 up to 110 miles an hour, plus we get some updated screens. For 2021, Smart Access gets included with push-button start as standard, plus an auto-dimming rearview mirror. For 2023, the 4Runner gets an all-new 40th anniversary edition, producing 4,040 units and standard all-wheel drive, plus three exclusive colors, plus badging. There's also solar octane paint, which is exclusive to the TRD Pro trim level. 2023 4Runner starts at the SR5 trim level at $38,105. You can upgrade to the TRD Sport that you see here for about $2,000 with a base price of $40,490 before the Gone Wild Savings, which is about $5,000. But the TRD Sport gets 20-inch rims, basically the same rims as the Limited. We also get basically the same suspension as the Limited. We get the x Ria Sport Enhanced Suspension, which features gas shocks, almost like an air suspension, which limits the overall roll and sway of the SUV and a hood scoop for the TRD Sport. Other than that, basically the same features out of the SR5 with the base price at $40,490. What else do we get for that money? Let's jump right in. So up front, you notice this beautiful liner rock uh, paint color plus the LED projector headlamps. The high beam is a halogen, so is the turn signal, but the fog light is LED. Pretty aggressive style front end Toyota badge with the Safety Sense P underneath. You may notice the forward facing camera. We do get a front facing camera plus a 360, which we'll check out once we step inside. Overall, though, the front end is very aggressive. The hood scoop certainly aids with the aggression. The wheel and tire setup, basically the same rims out of the limited. We get these really aggressive 20 inch rims wrapped in Yokohama Geolander G96 all-terrain ready tires. Dimensions being 245-60 R20, pretty aggressive brake caliper two, and a six-piece lug pattern. The rims have a gunmetal gray and silver contrast to it. I'm really liking that little fender flare too. Very aggressive. The mirrors are foldable. We get an additional camera on the mirror, which aids the 360 LED turn signal on the mirror itself. The glass fills up the entire frame. We get blind spot monitoring on the uh, glass that's included on the tech package, all blacked out trim for the window, trim smart access for the driver and the front passenger. We get the roof rails up top too for the TRD Sport, TRD Sport badging, gunmetal gray badging, the rear wheel and tire setup, same thing is out front, only difference is a smaller brake caliper. Hopefully you can get a good look at your rear suspension setup on the TRD Sport. Very aggressive overall. Hopefully I can angle my camera towards it. But anyway, We'll take a step back. The gas cap, you can simply open it up. No easy fill. You have to open up the gas cap to open it out rear. We have LED taillights. The turn signal is a halogen, but the rest of the taillight is LED 4Runner badge. The rear windshield is actually slidable. You can slide it up and down. Very unique for the segment this vehicle's in. Third brake light on the spoiler. We get a tow hitch. I'll leave a link right here to show you what this truck or SUV is rated to tow. Exhaust tip. Hopefully, you can pick up the rear suspension setup. We get a spare tire down below as well. But speaking of the exhaust tip, let's fire up this 4 liter V6 and hear how she sounds. All right, guys, that was the sound of the old school 4 liter V6 sold by Toyota for the 2023 4Runner. And it sounds pretty aggressive for what it is, making a healthy amount of power at 270 horsepower, 278 pound feet of torque, made it to a five speed automatic transmission. You can expect zero to 60 in the mid to high seven second range. So, certainly not the quickest, but it gets there. The hydraulic struts are certainly appreciated. The high elevated intake is also good for off road, although this is just a two wheel drive 4Runner, but for off road, the high intake certainly helps. We can shut this hood right up though. What you see is basically what we get. Take one more step back, get a good look at the front styling of this 2023 TRD Sport. As far as the interior, we'll take a step inside. 
and see what we get. So again, smart access for the driver and the front passenger. Up top, we get stitched materials for the door panel, hard plastic surrounding the air vent, not the air vents, what am I saying? The window controls, which are all auto one touch. The material surrounding the window controls is hard plastic, but it's well rubberized, some hard plastic here as well. Gushy soft for the armrest though. Stitching continues all throughout, some additional storage, massive storage on the bottom. You'll fit a foot long, two 12 ounce water bottles, no problems. The speaker is just a base speaker. The premiums get an upgraded sound system. The Limited and TRD Pro gets an upgraded JBL sound system, but here's just the base. Taking a step inside, we got this little floor liner with the Forerunner TRD Sport floor mats. But other than that, we get a plastic little kick plate for stepping inside. Syntex seats that say TRD on the headrest, fully adjustable. You can adjust lumbar, recline, drop, lift, and slide the seats. But taking a step inside, we can really check it out. So we'll start this thing right up. Engine start, stop, and fires right to life. So the first thing we notice is we get a very thick steering wheel very solid tendon to bolstering notch, nine and three fits great in your hands. And we get three spokes for both of the armrests plus a six o'clock spoke if you wanna be rec reckless and drive with your arm on your lap. The horn area is hard plastic. The horn itself, pretty aggressive sounding horn. People should definitely be getting out of your way. Volume and skip controls on the left side, voice commands, can answer and hang up your phone calls underneath. On the right side, your infotainment adjustments, return, forward collision alert, and lane keep assist, cruise controls, cruise control with that little stock in the corner. The turn signals have a satisfying click to it. We don't get automatic headlamps, which is unfortunate. We obviously don't get auto rain sensing wipers either, but we do get auto high beams, which is interesting. Interior brightness, you can adjust the mirror adjustments on this little center stack to love the steering wheel too. The view button shows us our camera. We have a rear view, forward facing camera, and a 360. All very impressive features. We have a blind spot camera too, so you don't have to worry about scuffing up these really nice 20 inch trims. Press one more time and we return to our home screen. We also have our AC adapter that you can turn on or off, 100 watt, 400 watt too, and a windshield de-icer, all controlled to the left of the steering wheel. The dashboard has a rubberized texture to it, but it is hard plastic as you guys can hear. For 2021, all four owners get an auto dimming rear view mirror, clock underneath, air vents, hazards, and an eight inch touchscreen. No navigation, you press the map button and it shows you that the navigation is not installed. You can get the chip aftermarket, but when you use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto and you press that map button, it'll just simply mirror the map on your phone onto the screen, which is pretty appreciated. But in the home screen, you see the audio, phone, and average miles per gallon plus range all through the touchscreen, all pretty cool. We don't get automatic climate control, but personally, I don't think it's a big deal because I use manual climate, even in vehicles with auto climate control. So certainly not a thumbs down from me. Beneath that, we have a USB port and two additional USB ports right next to it. No wireless charging pad, but that's available on the higher trims. Ton of storage, coin slot, gear selector, which controls your five-speed automatic transmission. You can get a good look at your backup camera. We saw the forward-facing camera already, but this is the backup camera with guidance lines and trajectory, and the backup or 360 also gets guidance lines and trajectory. The steering is also super heavy. Compared to most vehicles on the road today with electric steering racks, this hydraulic rack has a lot of heft to it. We have manual shift control too, no paddle shifters, but we do get manual shift controls on the gear selector in the improper direction. You can downshift and upshift. And as soon as we put it into drive, it shows us everything that's in our blind spot for our wheels, so we don't have to worry about scraping on the way out. Throwing right back into park, returns us right back to our home screen. This button slides down your rear windshield. You can press this button and it's an auto one touch and it opens up your rear windshield. Press one more time and it closes. So if you got kayaks, you got pets, that is a super convenient feature. It's, uh, one cup holder, I almost said two, but it's one cup holder, the pass-through, good spot for a phone, keys, or any type of car accessories. The armrest is gushy soft leather. You can open it up, massive. You're fitting two, possibly three, two liter bottles of soda in there, and you have an additional 12 volt in there too. Coin slot in the corner. We can shut this little console up. The glove box, you can push this button. It opens up massive. You're fitting 35, 40 license plates in there. You'll fit two pairs of shoes without any issues. We get some grain plastic right above it. Up top, you can turn off your traction control. Interesting location, three garage home link settings too. Interior lights are LED and we get a sunglass holder, SOS. No uh, moonroof, that's available also on the higher trims. But so far, this is a loaded, loaded SUV for the money. Speaking of for the money, let's take a look at this window sticker for the 2023 uh, 400 TRD Sport. So as you mentioned, mechanically, four liter dual overhead cam, 24 valve V6 with independent variable valve timing, cranking out 270 horse, 278 torque, five speed auto transmission, hill start assist, tow hitch receiver with seven and four pin connector, X Rhea Sport enhancement suspension, Toyota Safety Sense 
P, which includes pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, dynamic radar cruise control, lane departure alert, auto high beam start safety system, blind spot monitoring or rear cross traffic alert. So basically loaded features, 20 inch dark gray, metallic accented wheels, power sliding rear window, front skip blades, full size spare tire, TRD sport front hood scoop, black roof rails and a color keyed front grill bar. Interior, 8 inch touchscreen with 8 speakers, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, smart key system with push to start, black soft text interior with gray stitching, power driver's seat, TRD embroidered headrest with gray stitching, TRD shift knob with gray stitching. But that's about it. For 350 bucks, we get the sliding rear cargo deck, $500 savings for the Keep It Wild tech package for 810. I'll leave a link to show you everything that's available with that package. I know the blind spot monitoring is available, just not sure what else comes with it. But that's about it for the window sticker total price after a $1,200 destination charge. 43,540 bucks. That's about 1,300 bucks in manufacturer options. Total price sitting a tick under $45,000. So still a great value for a very off-road capable SUV. I know we don't have four by four, but it's still a pretty capable vehicle. And for on-road performance, this is more than what you need. So as far as these little infotainment adjustments, we don't have a whole lot. Right now we're looking at the fuel economy. You see after the reset, after refuel, eco indicator, digital speedometer, and a sway warning all pretty cool features you can also see the steering angle for off-road tire pressure lane departure warning and the overall messages from your screen the settings you can turn on and off all your advanced safety features for the toyota safety sense p my personal favorite to look at at all times would probably be just this regular screen with the average fuel economy and outside temperature the tack goes to about 5800 rpm speedometer goes to about 120 but that's about it for the front seat guys let's hop out back see how much space is offered back there as well as the overall quality of the material. So out back, up top, we still have that super soft leather stitch trim, auto one touch for the window, super soft for the armrest. You get a chrome outlined aluminum door handle, the materials for this armrest area are super soft, decent storage, you'll fit a 16 ounce water bottle with a sandwich right next to it. The seats are soft tech, syntex, super comfortable seats, not the most bolstering, but the legroom seems impressive. I'm a little bit over six feet tall, sitting behind my seat settings, and I still have at least five, six inches of overall knee room, plenty of room for my feet. Headroom, I have at least an inch, possibly two. We get air vents back here too. So space-wise, if you're under six foot five, you shouldn't have any issues back here whatsoever. We get two USB-C ports. Map pockets behind both of the front seats. You can take a quick look at this little center cubby area with a string, so you don't have to worry about jabbing your hand in there. Two cup holders, super soft for the armrest. The passengers back here will certainly be comfortable. That's about it though, the interior light is led we get a hook here too for the grab handle but that's about it for the back seat let's hop out of here check out the cargo space real quick and then take this 2023 forerunner trd sport out for a drive you can see these two buttons we have back here if you have the key in your pocket you can actually raise and lower the rear windshield from these two buttons but underneath the end you can open it up we don't have an auto opening tailgate but it is hydraulically assisted with a massive opening the step in is super low my knee is the same exact height as the step in so super pet friendly you got older or smaller pets they shouldn't have the toughest time hopping back here we have an ac adapter here too cool ton of storage for the outside portions the wheel well cutouts cut out well and we also have this little portable workbench that slides out back and forth so it could be pretty convenient for certain situations but other than that we can put all this back so it doesn't get too much into the way once you take it out for a drive the space itself very impressive you can fold the rear seats down 40 40 20 and i would expect you to fit up to a 75 maybe an 80 inch tv back here very solid cargo space and also super pet friendly thanks to the low step in and also the opening rear windshield we can shut this thing right up before we do so we actually have two additional speakers on the trunk itself but again Shutting this thing up, we'll take a step back, walk around this 2023 Forerunner TRD Sport one more time. It's a clean looking SUV. If I was going with a Forerunner, I would probably go TRD Sport. I would probably also go 4x4, but as far as a trim level, I think the TRD Sport is really all you need. All Forerunners get the same engine and transmission. As far as performance, let's take it out for a drive. All right, guys, now we're just about seeing everything we need to see with the inside and outside of the 2023 Toyota Forerunner TRD Sport. Let's take it out for a drive. And again, the first thing I notice is the steering. It's it's not quite as heavy as some of the other vehicles we've in this channel, like the Nissan Frontier or even the Toyota Tacoma, but it's really right up there in terms of weight. Once you're moving though, the steering doesn't feel obnoxiously heavy, so it does lighten up train tracks. Wow. It's got very decent ride quality. I was not expecting that with a solid rear suspension with this x rouse or x race uh, suspension active sway suspension it certainly cleans some of the sloppiness up 
All right, guys, taking a step out here. We lean into about halfway once we're situated. About halfway. Okay, so it definitely takes a while for the power to kick in. Uh, there we go. Once you start getting closer to 3,000, it starts to feel a lot stronger. So you can correct that just by stepping in the gas harder. Again, this is, also, this is only a five-speed transmission, so it will take a second to get into the power band. All right, guys, taking a step under this road, we're leaning into it a little bit more on the gas. Oh, okay, there we go. Yeah, okay, so the gas pedal is just not tuned very aggressively. At around half throttle, it didn't really feel like a whole lot, but once you lean into it a little bit more, this thing certainly begins to pick up. We'll throw it in a little faster than we should. The body roll is actually really limited. I was not expecting it to be like that. And on the gas. Ooh. Yeah, that transmission. Yeah. I was not expecting this engine to move this vehicle this well. The transmission certainly holds us back a little bit. For 2024, we should be receiving a full redesign though, a mechanical redesign, not just the facelift with a new turbocharged, probably a four cylinder platform, most likely similar to what we would get from the Toyota Crown. It would be, it would be cool to get like a super turbocharged platform, but it doesn't seem like that's where they're gonna be going with things. But still, it's gonna be a new power plant and a new transmission, most likely an eight speed or a 10 speed, one that you see similar from a Toyota Tundra. The whole chassis should be similar to a short bed single cab Tundra in general. So it's, it'll be exciting to see how that vehicle performs as far as like a highway passing power pull. Looks like we got some open road. We'll see what it's like on the gas. Yeah, it climbs speed pretty well. We don't have to push it a whole lot farther than that. We don't want to be in this truck's blind spot. So we'll slow down. We're not going to be passing him. But overall, at highway speeds, the road noise is pretty quiet. You don't really hear much wind noise either. It's surprising. I know that the suspension is basically the same as what you would get from the Limited. And the Limited has a base price about seven seventy-five hundred dollars $7,500 higher than this. And that's a nice suspension upgrade to have for the TRD Sport. It really transforms the ride quality of the 2023 4Runner. And once you're moving at higher speeds, the steering does lighten up. It feels very similar to most of the other vehicles on the road, but when you're not moving, I'm telling you, it is significantly heavier. So if you're gonna be doing most of your driving around the parking lot, expect to get a good bicep forearm workout in. All right, guys, taking a step out here, about half throttle. Yeah, the half throttle, I wish the throttle was tuned a little bit more sensitive. Like full throttle, this thing is taking off, but you have to lean into it like at least 60% of the way to really get the transmission and downshift strong. All right, one more time. This is where we're gonna close the review off at because there's a cop back there. We don't have to go too fast, about half throttle. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if it's the transmission or the tuning of the throttle itself. I wish it was more sensitive down low, but again, up top, it feels really strong. So overall, if you're looking for an off-road capable SUV, you don't want to spend more than 50 or so thousand dollars, 45, 50 thousand dollars. This is a great way to go. Proven, dependable, and reliable. As we mentioned, for 2024 or 2025, hopefully for 2024, the front are supposed to be seeing a very heavy update redesign, mechanical update and redesign. So if you still want that proven dependability, proven reliability from this bulletproof four liter V6 and five speed transmission, buy this thing right now before they're gone. If you want an a more modern updated vehicle yeah wait for 2024 it'll be turbocharged it'll have a new updated transmission but don't expect it to be going 300,000 miles consistently like this platform will so it depends on what you're looking for if you want a new vehicle wait if you want the vehicle that'll last forever buy it right now and a huge thanks to bill and the rest of the management and staff here at toyota of tampa bay for making this review possible i'll leave links to inventory below and if you're looking for a new car suv or truck in the tampa bay area i would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for bill and huge thanks to all of you for watching. I had a great time making this video. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much. You guys know the channel is just not possible without you guys, and I really appreciate the constant support. But again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Leave a like too. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. That's how these videos get promoted to new people. Leave a comment. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like. Leave a comment. Let me know if there's any specific cars, SUVs, or trucks you'd like to see reviewed on this channel, and I'll definitely try getting those videos for you ASAP. But other than that, again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope all of you have a great day.